All right, guys. So uh, welcome back to another video. We'll be discussing dynamic additives now. Uh, but in the last video, we talked about socket IK and sockets as virtual bone offsets. So I want to discuss a little bit in more depth real quick why we uh, why I did this the way I did and why it worked the way it did. Uh, why this works as opposed to just using the socket locations. The reason why is because if you've been following along, you know that the virtual bones will follow the animation. So when we create an offset, uh, when we create an offset based off the socket locations, the, that offset is going to now be local to the virtual bones. So when the virtual bones move, that offset moves with it. That's the reason why they work. Uh, pretty simple to understand and explain, uh, but I just thought I'd go ahead and cover that in case anybody was a little bit confused. So moving on, uh, dynamic additives, we're going to be discussing this now. Uh, so dynamic additives, uh, this is a dynamic additive right here, and this is the way you'll see it set up. But I brought this in just, just to show you the difference. Uh, we actually don't need that, but uh, I have it here anyway just for demonstration purposes. So whenever you set up a dynamic additive, you're basically doing the same exact thing you would do uh, on a pre runtime setup where you go into the animation editor and you set it to like mesh space or local space and you set your base animation. The only difference is, is that you can change this stuff, the base in the additive during runtime. That's the difference. Uh, in most cases, you're only going to want to use a make dynamic additive when you need to apply it to multiple other animations. Uh, that are dynamic and changing. Uh, there aren't a lot of situations in which you would actually need to use a make dynamic additive. And in fact, there is a performance overhead uh, related to that. And the reason why is because all those bones, all those deltas between all those bones between these two, two animations, those have to be calculated during runtime every tick. So uh, that's one of the reasons why ALS is so heavy is because they have a lot of these make dynamic additives. Uh, they're uh, doing this a lot on different layers and uh, it's it's a little performance heavy. Uh, it's not that bad though, because they're only doing it in one place. Uh, so anyway, there is a performance overhead related to it, but you'll see if I hook up a mesh space uh, setup that was made from the animation editor that isn't dynamic during runtime, you'll see that it looks no different. If yours does look different, there are bugs in Unreal Engine. Uh, in fact, when I tried to do this video, uh, the left hand went behind them, and I was a little confused as to why it did that because it shouldn't have done that. Uh, I had to redo uh, this animation in order to fix it. Some kind of bug corrupted it, so just let that be known. I'll go ahead and show you what the local space version of it looks like. Almost the same except the arms are a little bit, uh, they're a bit in a different place. And the reason why is because they're respecting the rotation of the arms on that running animation. Whereas in mesh space, they don't respect it as much and they try to maintain their orientation in relation to the mesh and not the animation they're being applied to. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out to you guys, but that's it. That's basically it for this one. I'll be going over dynamic additive layering systems in the next video, and we'll be setting up the project from scratch uh, just to demonstrate this even further and how you would actually use this in a real life situation. So I will see you guys in the next video.